Good morning, folks. I've tilted the sun sideways here so we can show you a towering plasma filament standing straight up as it dances onto the Earth-facing disk. There are some smaller solar tornadoes incoming way to the north as well. But all in all, we're seeing what we've seen for days and days on end. Our star is in a very calm state at the moment as it sits on the precipice of not only the 11-year cycle's sunspot minimum, but a longer cycle's grand solar minimum era. We see no Earth-directed eruptions over the last 24 hours, or 48 or 72 hours for that matter, but just this morning, we're finally seeing a slight chance at a change. We are essentially in a stellar all-quiet event at the moment. The solar flaring has flatlined for days, but is showing slight signs of revival at the moment due to new sunspots entering the Earth-facing disk. Also some plagues with potential up here, something to watch. Coming to the solar wind, we see telemetry showing weaker pressure on nearly all fronts. The magnetic instability of Earth's shield is disappearing. The northern coronal hole departs while the smaller one faces Earth today, down south. Not too much power, but with the planets in a line, we do have a minor quake watch and the unusual location rumbling continued in the Caribbean as four pointers are always worth mentioning. And so this 4.9 is a nice complement to the short-term swarm at Puerto Rico we showed yesterday. Underwater volcano activity in the region is surging as well. Alerts have been raised. And we also just took a five-pointer in Greece, which is well above their day-to-day -day shaking. Space events of the last day include the second gamma burst in three days, Centaurus, then Canis Major. Top article is about space vitamins, B3 can and is produced in space, which isn't too unexpected given the wealth of organic material found in comets. I hope you don't mind me featuring the first article from our spaceweathernews.com as well. I was on the phone briefly yesterday with Tom Berger, director of NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, and it looks like Discover is making the team very proud already. We have our first experimental solar wind data and a timeline for full integration. It is linked for you below. Folks, today marks the two-year anniversary of opening up SuspiciousObservers.org for premium content. In honor of the first week supporters, the price of membership is lower this last week of July only. Normally 30 bucks a year, the price is now only 20 bucks a year and can be locked in for life. And that's for hundreds and hundreds of hours of material. If you currently have a membership, you'd need to wait for it to expire to jump onto the new system. So if it expires after this week, you'll either have to start fresh, clear your account, or send me an email and have me do it for you. That's a zero in my email address for observers, not an O. We're swamped, so if you can figure it out without my help, can't imagine how it would help. This is the tropical identification and track predictions with my cursor, followed by the most important alerts in our top viewer locations, current global conditions, and shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.